this is what we've tried to express is like we're not trying to do a mastermind where we're up in the front of the room teaching something like i don't really believe that that's the best way to learn i think what you're doing is the very best way to learn yeah. jumping in with both feet and doing a deal you're going to get more out of this first deal that you do so you're here you got a few months in between kind of gigs back home yeah you're buying a, a triplex you're going to potentially live in the the smallest of the units yeah. right and yeah, then the rent dungeon. out the other two for cash flow well your video is what sold me to i mean i knew you were selling it i came here to meet you but that video put me it made me buy the ticket that at the same time seeing you on youtube falling in love with your channel just what you preach uh, you did make a video once about raising rent and how to do it and that was another thing that kind of sold me the way i think you said um you usually rent out in the lower end anyways mm -hmm. and then if the market rises you come to the tenant and ask them what they can afford yeah. and you guys kind of work together that way if it's a good tenant we've so, been very successful with that i've always loved puerto rico so it's always been my go-to as far as vacations i love the food the culture the women i love everything <laughs> about puerto rico Everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Robbie Craig of the Flip Flop Flipper, and today we're gonna have a conversation with Justin Gonzalez. Justin has joined our mastermind, the Apex Mastermind, and we're doing a deal together. And this is what it's all about for us. So for me, this is a very exciting video. We're sitting in the studio now. We're gonna talk about Justin and his ties to the island of Puerto Rico, doing his first real estate deal here with us. And Justin is new to this guys so give this video a like and share it with everybody because i think this video really does hopefully do a deep dive of the fact that anybody can do this you do not have to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth to become a real estate investor you just have to have a desire and you have to be willing to put the work in and one thing i know about justin in the short time that i've met you justin is you're not afraid to show up and you're not Straight afraid to the fire and you're not afraid to jump in with both feet and i think yeah. that's really what it takes and so say hi to everybody kind of introduce yourself give a little bit of your background because you are an entrepreneur you've, you've got a business but it's a little bit different than mm -hmm. the real estate business my name is justin gonzalez i do private security and private investigations so this is a whole new field for me i saw you on youtube i subscribe to your channel probably because i'm obsessed with Puerto Rico in the market and I always wanted to buy a house here yeah so with your help I'm knocking a few marks off my bucket list you know so I think if you watch enough of our YouTube channel guys you'll hear me often inviting people to partner with us mm -hmm. and inviting people to come to Puerto Rico when we started we were spotlighting real estate deals in Puerto Rico we've kind of expanded to more general or broad-based real estate development type channel value add we call it and you are yeah you are checking off some things on your list yeah. and you are going to take on some heavy lifting right like yeah it's I not came a here real heavy air mattress lift. So. you came with an air mattress yeah and i'm going to put you up somewhere with air conditioning tonight and yeah then tomorrow you're you're on your own <laughs> yeah straight into the fire tomorrow <laughs> and uh you know it's not a big lift this mm -hmm. isn't a, a massive renovation we've already done that yeah some of the cool parts of this story and i think we can talk about this more as we're like on site is that this was one of the first things that we bought if not the first thing that we bought when we got to the island and it was a train wreck when we got it it was it, it had been vacant for a decade and the last tenants and even the tenants when we bought it it was it was horse stables so yeah every room had a horse in it and a bunch of horse poop and so we bought it very inexpensively and then did everything to get it to where someone could live there and now it's been being lived in for a while and you're gonna get it and yep. get it rented out and get it cash flowing and it's an exciting time oh yeah to do your yeah. first deal my first deal on the island your first deal on yeah. the island well your video is what sold me to i mean i knew you were selling it i came here to meet you but that video put me it made me buy the ticket well that Plus means it you, works <laughs> yeah and and also you saying so much that you'll uh, you'll go partner in deals with people that have never done this before so yeah yeah and, 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 and no then brainer. the mastermind thing that we're doing too i mean this is what we've tried to express is like we're not trying to do a mastermind where we're up in the front of the room teaching something like i don't really believe that that's the best way to learn i think what you're doing is the very best way to learn yeah. jumping in with both feet and doing a deal you're going to get more out of this first deal that you do than going to dozens of little seminars and things like you oh, came yeah, to the yeah. seminar last week right like yeah. this has gone quick guys you showed up to a seminar where i was speaking and you pulled me aside right after the first break and said hey i, I came here to see you i don't even know who these other people are yeah. i just knew you were speaking i was like well that's that's pretty damn cool yeah. 
Yeah. That was I didn't know cool. if you would remember me as the psycho that was commenting on every video <laughs> you put out. <laughs> So. Well, don't stop doing that, please. <laughs> no, I'm not. I get notifications when a new one pops up. Yeah, that's all. And you know what? We yeah. love it when people do that. Like we, we have you and a few other people that are constantly commenting. Yeah. And I feel like we get to know each other that way. So I, please don't stop doing that. I, no. I and, and anybody who's watching our videos, you want to get to know me, comment in there and, and let's start having conversations. So you're here. You got a few months in between kind of gigs back home. Yeah. And you're, you're buying a, a triplex. You're going to potentially live in the the smallest of the units, yeah. right? And yeah, then the rent dungeon. out the other two for cash flow. Yep. So tell us, how are you so brave that you would think to be able to do this? I just know that's what I want to do, and I can't tell you how. I just I go after what I want. Yeah, Every I love that. I yeah. love that. I'm the same way. I, we made a decision, like, the first time I came to Puerto Rico was, mm -hmm. I think I want to go there. And yeah. then within the week between... Christmas and New Year's, we were here after Hurricane Maria. The lights were still out. Right. And we made the decision that we were moving to Puerto Rico to buy real estate. Like, yeah. And that's how we did it. We started making offers on things. We actually physically moved to the island before we'd ever bought anything. And right. we bought something like right around March of 2018 mm -hmm. and started a whole business around buying and selling and buying and renting real estate. And now you're doing the same thing six yeah. years later, seven yeah. years later. Yeah. Let's talk about your kind of ties to the island, right? Like, okay. So I think that's a really cool part of the story, too, is that your dad's from here, your grandmother's from here. Mm -hmm. You have cousins who live on the island. Yeah. You're not here specifically because of your relationships that are here. You, you love the island, but you have ties to it as well. Right. I've always loved Puerto Rico, so it's always been my go-to as far as vacations. I love the food, the culture, the women. I love everything <laughs> about Puerto Rico. And you're recently single, ladies. So, I mean, he's yeah. a good-looking guy. He's coming to the island. Maybe we're a dating, me in the we're, comments. We're a dating site on this one here. It, it, <laughs> I'll be in the comments. Comment. Justin Gonzalez. <laughs> there you go. That's a first for our YouTube yeah. channel. Let's see if this works. Let's see. I'll let you know tomorrow. Maybe I'll be on the next video. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. And your, your dad... He lived in Saba for a while, and then... Yeah, well, he... My grandmother's from Aguadilla. Okay. Um, but she moved to New York young as a kid. My, most of my family's from New York. Yeah. And when my grandfather died, and my father was like 14, they moved back to Puerto Rico to Saba for... But not for long, like a year. They moved back to New York, and that was it. And we've always just come on vacation. So that was before you were born, At, right? Like oh, you, yeah, yeah. You didn't go no, stay was, with your dad when he was in Saba. You, no, you were no. in New York... Long time ago. Long time ago. Yep. And then now mom and dad live in Florida. Mom you and live dad in live in, yeah, in Boca Raton. Okay. Work planned out. Everything aligned for me for me to be here within yeah. the last year. Some of it is my doing and some of it is just kind of fate. Yeah. So recognizing all of that, at the same time seeing you on YouTube, falling in love with your channel, just what you preach. Uh, you did make a video once about raising rent and how to do it. And that was another thing that kind of sold me the way I think you said um, you usually rent out in the lower end anyways. Mm -hmm. And then if the market rises, you come to the tenant and ask them what they can afford. Yeah. And you guys kind of work together that way if it's a good tenant. We've so. been very successful with that yeah. method. Yeah. And then what happens generally is that they will give me a bigger raise than maybe I would feel comfortable asking for yeah. and we still keep the rents way below what market is a lot yeah. of times although eventually tenants do move out and then when they do we get to go in and bring the house up to the market rent and so there's right. a nice lift there at that time so it works out really well to keep tenants in the properties for a long period of time mm -hmm. and we, we like to have a good relationship with our tenants and we want to keep good tenants in the yeah. properties but we also want our tenants to move on to home ownership Right. Right. Like, so I need to do a video about that yeah. because I don't know how many times I could be in that one too. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many times we've taken a tenant who, who was a renter mm -hmm. and helped them become a homeowner. Right. And it's something that we've done over the years several times. And it's something that it's our heart's desire to do for all of the tenants. Right. Like, right. so some tenants are never going to do it and, yeah. and that's fine. But for those tenants that want to move into home ownership we put out this youtube channel to encourage everyone to come into right. this this is a great life this real estate investing mm -hmm. has allowed us to have a great life and i believe that it's there for everybody it's not Absolutely. just again this silver spoon in your mouth type of mentality and yeah. i think people believe 
that you have to have all of your ducks in a row. You have to know exactly what you're doing before you do it. You have to be able to qualify for this massive mortgage and all of that stuff. That's not the way we've done it. Right. So let's talk briefly about our conversation that we would have, because I think it's a, it's a cool conversation maybe for people to understand. You come to an event. Mm-hmm. So first you start commenting on the YouTube yeah. channel, right? And we, we start to get to know each other. Then you show up at the event. And McKenna, I told you I was coming. You told the me you were coming. The Daredevil video. Yeah. And McKenna, and McKenna says, hey, Justin's here. And I'm like, all right, great. We got to meet him. And you and I talk briefly at the event. And then the next day, yeah. you go out to this house in Fajardo without me. You're, you're like, hey, send me the pen. Show me where it's at. I'm going. I wanted to see the area. Yeah. So. <clears throat> what did you think of the area when you saw it? I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. I how, lo- about I the, didn't... how about those views for $135,000 house? That, that was a mark off my bucket list. <laughs> the ocean view. Yeah. So, I mean, everything just checked the box. When I saw that video, I, I knew I wanted that house. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know it would still be available. I also knew that you were my guy. That's what I told you. Yeah. When I first met you, I, you know, I watched your channel. I came here and every what I liked about the the um, what was it? Creative Investors Conference. Yeah. Last conference. weekend. That was when I was here. I'm back already. It's yeah. been a week there. I didn't feel like there was any sharks in the room. Yeah. Everybody was down to earth. Everybody was nice. They all seemed like people that I would get along with or could do business with. So I loved that about that conference. Yeah. You know, you had some real heavy hitters in the room. Jerry yeah. Norton was there. Jerry and, and Norton. There were, there were several speakers that like just brought tremendous value. And nobody was trying to sell you anything, right? No. Like, so you're sitting there and they're just telling you what they do. Yeah. And they've either got YouTube channels, they've got courses, they've got all of this stuff. But they weren't trying to sell you the next thing. No. They, they were no. just trying to bring value to the room. And I talked about this with Irvin last week, a video that'll, that'll go out shortly, where I thought he, he knocked it out of the park, where yeah. his event, he put 45 or 50 people in a room and allowed people to do deals together. So I'm in talks with him and two or three other people. I just got an email today from a guy that says, hey, I want to talk to you about a, a small resort. And by having these small groups of like-minded people in the same place at the same time, it allows for... Yeah. Things like this to happen. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't know if I'm the only one who got a deal out of it, but I know I'm not the only one who was talking about it. Yeah. And I don't know what the different deals are and with the different people, but I, yeah. we're doing the first one that, that I had gotten. And I, and I will be able to say we did it because of YouTube, because of you coming to the island. Yeah. And then even on, was it Sunday night or Monday morning, we were sitting there having coffee and you were kind of telling me that you were excited about it, but. It took me like halfway through the conversation for me to realize that you were like, hey, I want to do this. I yeah. want to I I wanna make this offer. It wasn't easy to just jump out and say it like that, you know? Yeah. But Well, you were being pretty we clear, but I, I, I try not to be super pushy. Like I'm not, yeah. not going to timeshare someone into becoming a real estate investor. I put, I put the stuff out there. I invite people to partner with us. And a lot of times, because of my low-key, low-pressure, I, I may miss – some signals i'm yeah. I, and and i think three quarters of the way through i was like well i think he's making an offer I'm like he really <laughs> wants to do it <laughs> yeah know? and so then we started talking about it and before we were done with coffee we had a handshake deal yeah and yeah. then it and sounds then pretty flew. crazy but i think it'll work i think everything will, will work out good yeah you know we're now in a mastermind together mm-hmm. and for me the success of a mastermind is exactly this, that yeah. we're going to do deals together. You're going to be successful with the deal that you do. And I think just like Irvin did with his group where there were 40 people that were like-minded, our, our mastermind will probably be quite a bit smaller than that, but we're going to do deals together. And if we don't, then that won't really be a success for me, right? right. Like, so it's not just uh, trying to put a group together to make some money and for me to preach about real estate. I'm really passionate about be- people becoming real estate investors. The pressure's on both of us. The pressure's on both <laughs> of us to succeed. I'll tell you what, I'll give you this as my YouTube family out there, whether we're successful with it or not, you're going to know about it. Like yeah. I'll put it out there, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So if we are three months down the road and, and you're struggling with something and we come back in here, we'll talk about all the struggles as yeah. well. Yeah. If everything goes really, really well, which it won't, uh, we'll talk about that too. Like I, I yeah. pray that it does. And realistically, there is a really good chance that it will. If, if you're going to do what it seems like you're going to do, mm-hmm. you'll be able to fight through all of the problems, but there's going to be struggles. There's going to be days yeah. where you're going to be Robbie. 
<laughs> of course. I've, I've been sitting three days in a row here trying to get the power turned on, and I'm going to be saying, yeah, you got to go the fourth day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep showing up. We'll deal with it as it comes. You're, you're going to deal with it as it comes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're going to do the work yourself, that'll be a big advantage for, for you and for yeah. this project. And on this one, I think you can do almost all of the work yourself. But mm -hmm. to the extent that you have to hire outside help on the island, you're, you're going to learn about how difficult that can be on the I, I can imagine. Let's get into some deal structure. And first, before we jump into the deal structure, let me ask you, what's your vision for this property? For the property, I wasn't sure at first. I wanted to do what, whatever was best money-wise. Mm -hmm. Maybe flip it in a year. I don't know. But being that it's my first property, I'm not 100%, but I feel like I want to hold on to it. Yeah. I know in the long game, that's what I want to do, hold on to everything if I can. But for the meantime, I'm going to live in the dungeon downstairs, the 1-1, one, one, <laughs> and rent out the three ones, the two three ones that are identical. Yeah. Balconies with ocean views on both of them. Yeah. I don't see how I could lose. I don't see how you could lose either. And so, and we can talk about why we think that you can't lose. So yeah. you're purchasing it from us for $135,000. Mm -hmm. The median, the average household sells for on the island of Puerto Rico right now, 215000 Now, I'm not saying that that's what this house is worth right now today fixed up, but our realtor has told us that, hey, if it's in great condition, it's worth at least 175000 bucks. So you got some equity. Yeah. We've also done this in a very creative way so that it's low money out of pocket for you and then an easy payment. Mm -hmm. And so just to run through our deal structure, it's $135,000 purchase. Justin put down fifteen grand. And so you owe us $120,000, if I'm doing that math right. And you're going to pay rent, basically, of 900 a month. And you should be able to rent out each of those apartments, the, the three-bedroom, one-bath, and the other three-bedroom, one-bath, for around 900 a month yeah. for each of them. If you do Section 8, Plan Ocho, which is like the lowest of the low-hanging fruit, they're eight hundred dollars in Fajardo for a three bedroom, one bath like that. So right. you'd, you'd be at sixteen hundred a month, which more than covers your nut to us and cover power and water and taxes right. and that kind of stuff. So that's, that's what we've done, and we've done it on a lease option, mm -hmm. uh, which gives you the flexibility. Like you don't have to come and qualify with the bank, which would be hard because your income comes from Florida. Right. And and so what will happen is over time you'll start to get that income. And hopefully there'll be like a DSCR loan that can do the takeout. I like the fact that you want to keep it because I think anytime someone can buy something and make it cash flow and then hold on to it for five, six, eight years, 10 years, it has no choice but yeah. to make you a ton of money, right? Like yeah. that that's the way real estate goes. Even if during a period of time it may back up a little bit, if you hold on to it long enough, you crush it. I yeah. mean, that, that's been true 100% of the time for me. If I, if yeah. I hang on to something long enough, I always really my, do really well. My plan is if I have to, just scratch and claw till I can pay it off. Yeah, and, and so further speaking about our, our creative deal, when you do a lease option like this, you have a comfortable payment, you get one renter, you're covered, yeah. and then anything that you pay above that will put towards your purchase, and then I, I don't even remember what term we've got, but two or three years before we are even going to start yeah, three. worrying about you paying us off. You're welcome to pay us off anytime you want, yeah. but we will we'll do everything we can at the point when it's time to do that to help you find a loan. Yeah. Maybe we talk to Bill Halleck or Nate Stewart, some of the guys that have been on the YouTube channel, and, and hopefully there'll be a DSCR loan. Because unless you're living here and running your business here, you're still going to have that income problem, yeah. right? So being here. So you want to make sure that you've got some income outside of it, but you also get to use the rents as part of your income to qualify for the loan. Yeah, you'll have to help me get set up for all of that. But that, yeah, that's Yeah, and I'm plan. no expert on that, so I, I don't <laughs> claim to be, but I think we can bring in the heavy hitters, and that, that's part of what we'll do when we're in, inside of the mastermind is some of these guys that I'm talking about mm -hmm. are going to be a part of the mastermind, and so we're going to bring these kind of businesses together and they're, yeah. we're going to be able to feed off of each other. Yeah, well, I knew that coming here, that coming to Puerto Rico, it's completely different. And I need people like you and everyone I met at the, at the conference last weekend. Yeah. So you guys are more valuable than I am right now in this deal. And I know that. Well, I'd give yourself more credit than that, because I, yeah. I say all the time, I, I believe... Well, we have videos out now, so you need me to succeed. I need you to <laughs> succeed. We're going to have videos about it. We'll, we'll put out the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I say all the time, on shorts and on longs, I, I say, you know, the money's not the most important part of the deal you are. Like, the real estate investor is the, the superhero in this, the one right. who comes in and puts in the work and gets this mm -hmm. stuff done. 
And you're stepping into that. Yeah. This is, you're going to learn so much doing your first deal. Like if there's anything that I could say from this video to tell people, yeah, educate yourself, you know, come up with good partners and good partnerships, mm -hmm. but having the courage to jump in with both feet and do a deal, this is life changing. Like yeah. this, even if you don't hit it out of the park, you will learn so much from doing this. And from what I know of you, you're the type of guy that's not going to stop with just one. Hell, you were already showing me the next deal as we were sitting here yeah, before we yeah. went on camera. We're going so you're already <laughs> saying, why isn't this a good deal? I'm like, yeah. so you've got the right mindset. It's a, you're going to learn so much from that first deal. You're going to look back, you know, five, 10 years from now, and, and you're going to be able to say, hey, that first deal that I did. Yeah taught me everything well it's it the game has changed for me now because for like at least five years i get everyday emails of houses here but looking at an email is different from being here and yeah. seeing you have to be here to see the houses in person yeah i know that and i'm here now i'm meeting the right people yeah the people and, i need to meet and you showed me something today you're like why isn't this a deal and i'm looking at it it's like it's a a big house with views in, in Canovanas for 49 grand or something like yeah. that. And it's a wreck, right? Like doesn't have doors and windows. It looks like a, uh, someone who was renovating it ran out of money, yeah. but let's go see it. Right. Because you're like, why isn't this a deal? I'm like, I, I think that's a deal. I, I think why it's not a deal is because there aren't enough people like yourself who have come to the Island who are willing to take it on and yeah. who, are, who are willing to just go and, and fight the fight until it's a completed project yeah. and that can be rented or it can be sold. Once, I think once people realize that they can partner with people like you, you're going to want to turn your phone off. <laughs> you're going to close the YouTube channel. No, I mean, that, this is how we expand our business. And it has yeah. been the entire time we've been on the island has been by partnering with people who come to the island that are like minded. And we say it all the time and we live it all the time is that we expand our business through partnerships. We invite partnerships. This mm -hmm. is really the way we are doing things. Yeah. So I like that, you know, we're, we're here doing this video because this is one of the first times that it's played out this way for us from YouTube, right? right? Like, so the plan has always been that we would do more and more through the YouTube channel. A couple years ago, we had some guys come from New York that, mm -hmm. that invested with us in a deal and then went on to invest with some of our other partners in another deal. And kind of in between that, there's been a lot of videos and not a lot of partnering directly through YouTube. Mm -hmm. But the whole time we've been continuing to do deals and partnering with people on, on, on every deal we do. So I love that now people get to see it. And yeah. you're a real guy, right? Like yeah. we didn't know each other I'm not a month AI, ago, right? No. <laughs> yeah, not a you're, robot. <laughs> you're, you're not a robot. You're a real person. Yeah. And, and my point is we didn't know each other. We don't go way back. We, we didn't have a relationship two months ago or a mm -hmm. month ago. And this is just the first deal we're doing. This, yeah. this hopefully won't be the only deal we do. For right. us, it's never about one deal. We want to do deal after deal after deal. Absolutely. There's no point in stopping. There's no point in I'm stopping. I'm moving here. You're <laughs> so, moving here. You're going to be here. Yeah. You're already looking at stuff that I wasn't looking at, right? Like, so you yeah. hand me the phone and say, why, is, why isn't this a deal? That's not something that Don had looked at or something that I had looked at. Yeah. And that's how Puerto Rico is, right? Like, mm -hmm. so the more energy that can come to the island and, and kind of tackle this stuff, I say it all the time. There, there are deals everywhere, especially yeah. in places like Canovanas and Fajardo and outside of the San Juan metro area. Right. If, if you are looking for a home, like if you just wanted to come here and, and buy a home, like I said earlier, the, the median home price, and I just looked this up today, it's like $215,000. Right. That's half, mm -hmm. maybe less than half of what it is in most of the USA, right? Yeah. That, that's the, most of for the main better returns. And way better returns, yep. right? Way more upside. Yeah. And beautiful views. Like even yeah, the Canovanas exactly. house, you're looking at mountains, you're looking at the – it's distant, but – I didn't think I could get a triplex – yeah. with ocean views for that price yeah i and, never thought that and in, in florida that. yeah a, a similar house your view is like to the bottom of your driveway the street there's no yeah. view the house across the street blocks it <laughs> that's right there's not a tree behind it you can see yeah there's no hills yeah. there's there's no mountains yeah forget and about unless water. you're unless you're buying it right on the ocean you don't get ocean views not at it's all. just too flat and boring puerto yeah. rico's really a special place i had somebody reach out to me on facebook because she put a post anonymously about needing an apartment in, in the Fajardo area or having to sell all her belongings. So I told her I could probably help you with either of those situations, mm -hmm. but you'll need to give me about a week or two. Yeah. So <laughs> she didn't give me a week or two. 
and she's asking me about requirements and a few other questions that I don't have the answers to. If you're going to think about her as a tenant, mm-hmm. first you'll, you need to clean the place up a little bit, but yeah. it, it shouldn't take very long. Mm-hmm. And then I think I would recommend that you get with the Don and there's some screening stuff that happens on the island. And I think you told me about her that she was a retired principal in New yeah. York State, right? Mm-hmm. So very likely she, she's going to be a good tenant. But you want to make sure you do a background check. You want to make sure you verify that she's got some income. It sounds like mm-hmm. she's probably got some stable retirement income, and she's coming back to the island you know, from New York State, I think. Right. Is that right? So yeah. we'll do our best to, to help you with that, and mm-hmm. we can connect you with uh, Angelica, who is the girl that works for us, that screens all of our tenants and helps us to, to find uh, renters as well. That's what I would say about that is like, want to make sure that someone who's very anxious, just that they are who they say they are, that they, you know, hmm. are going to make right. their payments and stuff like that. So just okay. be careful with that. And don't, I, I think you've got a big heart. And so don't just believe everybody's story without verifying it. Yeah, like I have a big course. heart and I want to believe I have a big heart, too. but I'm a private investigator too. <laughs> okay. So you're even better. Yeah. So what am I telling you? You're going to screen this person. Yeah. You're going to screen anybody better than we ever have. Yeah. In fact, maybe you'll come up with a, a good screening system for the island of Puerto Rico and we can, we can use that. And <laughs> we'll see. And there, there maybe could be I'll be good at finding you. people like you said. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you, you know what? You laugh, yeah. but it, Knowing your background, this is a, a massive need on the island. Yeah. There, there are people that reach out probably weekly that say, oh, I, I found something on the island and I, and I want to know who owns it. And how do you go about that? And I'm like, yeah. I haven't got a clue. But now I'm going to be able to say, ask Justin. <laughs> yeah. So you can get some work that yeah. way. Yeah, 10% send me anywhere. <laughs> there you go. How do you feel the difference between Section 8 and the regular renter? Yeah, that's a great question. So when we first came to the island, we went heavy into Section 8, Plan Ocho. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we did that was because it's guaranteed money from the government. And at the time, Section 8 was at the top of the rental market. So so like the the Section 8 rents that they would pay were either right at the top of what we could expect through just common rents, through through Mm -hmm. ordinary rentals, or maybe even a little bit above. And we also got the certainty of the check coming in from the government. Right. Now, for, for that, you give up something, right? Like, so it takes longer to qualify those tenants. And even after you've got someone with a voucher, then getting the property qualified, it, it's not like if you rent to this lady who you were just talking about. Mm-hmm. Once you believe her story and you like her and you've done the background check, she could move in next week. Okay. If you find a Section 8 tenant, you do all of the same stuff, and the government will cause slowdowns, and, and it will take you 45 days or 60 days. So you'll have this window from an agreement with a tenant who you, who you like and who you want to have in your property, and they've got a Section 8 voucher, I'm assuming, and then still there's a process that goes with okay. with the government to get there. So you get the guaranteed money, but it's slower on the front end. You might lose the first month or two. You lose, I, I would say two months is probably really okay. what we experienced, especially early on. And so maybe hopefully it's been sped up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, when we were coming, remember, was right after Maria and there was a lot of housing need. Yeah. And so it was maybe uh, a little bit overworked the system. I think that it's gotten a little bit better. Mm-hmm. The other thing that's happened is rents have risen, right? Like, so the house that you're buying f- from us in Fajardo, when we first bought it, after we renovated it, it was like 600, 600 and three or 400 for the, for the dungeon the that dungeon, you said you're going to yeah. live in. And wow. now we know uh, that if it's Section 8, you're going to get 800, 800. And if you were renting out the dungeon, you'd probably get 500. So it's okay. gone up and, and likely rents are slightly higher out there if you're not going section eight so you might get 900 900 and 550 right so that just keep that in mind right okay. and and you want to weigh that with what you're comfortable with like mm-hmm. it certainly was nice at the start of covid that we had a whole bunch of section eight renters that we were sure we were still going to get paid yeah right like so there was a big fear at the time as even as someone who'd been in it a long time nobody had ever been through that before and we didn't know if rents were going to continue to come in. Now, it all worked out and it and it did. It it went really well for us, but to have that security meant yeah. a lot. 
So right. I, I think a good mix, like do one with the lady after you do the background check yeah. and do one section eight or something and, and you've got a good mix. And Assuming then I know you're going to live in the other while you're fixing the house up, but eventually maybe you're going to be on to the next deal right. and you'll rent out the all three of them, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm not stuck in Fajardo. Yeah, well, there's worse places to be stuck, though. Fajardo's... Yeah. Oh, no, I like it, but Fajardo's I'm going to be moving around. Yeah, and and it's not a very far trip to go from Fajardo to Canovanas or Rio Grande or Luquillo. Right. That whole area, or Seba. Mm -hmm. Th there are bargains to be had out there. Yeah, I've seen them. I see yeah. them every day. <laughs> and then maybe this is a plan that we, we can kind of come up with as, as we get further into the mastermind and stuff. But this is something that I've said on YouTube before, when you're starting out, you know, buy three properties and mm -hmm. try and keep one, maybe sell two, keep one, and then do that the first six. You know, you, you buy three, you keep one, you sell two. Then the next three, you, you buy three, you keep another one. Now mm -hmm. you've got two and you've sold four. And then the next time you buy three, you keep two and you sell right. one. And eventually try and keep them yeah. all for a longer period of time, right? right. That's That's what it's... That's where you're going to be certain of building wealth and building that cash flow and getting yourself to where you have passive income. Mm -hmm. And passive income comes with a whole lot of work <laughs> and time. Yeah. But it does come. Yeah. Eventually you get there. Eventually you get there, right? Like it, it, it took me, and you can learn from me, it, it took me 15 years before I ever kept that first rental property. We were just buy and sell, buy and sell, buy mm -hmm. and sell. And I, I think I missed out on... Uh, I think I missed out on a lot by not just deciding to keep one out of every few that I right. had. If I had done that, I would have been been more free in a faster period of time. Hmm. So Interesting. Just or learn through my, my mistakes. But. Okay. Why do you consider yourself free faster by that route? Yeah, so it's a great question. For me, what happened is 10, 15 years in, uh, we had the big crash. Mm -hmm. And I had no income. All of my income came from selling the next house. So I had a massive investment out there, and I was using all debt, and I had no revenues to offset the debt. And so when, when the real estate market crashed for us, we had never rented a property, not one. And, <laughs> and so we have this huge interest payment going out. It was like uh -huh. seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars a month on all of these flips that we're supposed to sell that we're no longer going to sell. Mm -hmm. And we, we were just in big, big trouble. Had I been keeping them for, for the whole time all along for 15 years, even if it was only one or two a year, I'd have had some revenue and I would have been in a much better position to be able to offset right. my difficulties, right? So that was a big learning curve for me. Mm -hmm was going through that then we went the other way where we were keeping everything after the crash and now now we're sort of in this healthy mix of we buy most stuff to keep and we buy most stuff to try and get to that cash flow that passive income mm -hmm. but we still want to do a handful of flips every year that seems to be a much better mix i think that you get to financial security and then ultimately freedom by stacking up cash flow Right. right. Like I created myself a job having flipped like a thousand houses in the first 15 years. And if I didn't continue to do what I was doing, the money just stops. Right. But had I kept a few and, and now that I have, I've got checks coming in every month. I mean, we, we were able to come to Puerto Rico because we had a rental portfolio in Florida mm -hmm. and we were able to know that we're going to eat the next month because that that income is going to come in. Yeah. Yeah. So it's exciting. It is exciting, and you know we we learn that stuff by doing it mm -hmm. and going through it. Right. Yeah, I've always been the kind to, that I learn hands on. Yeah. If it's not hands on, it's in one ear and out the other. Yeah, but hopefully not everybody suffers from that, right? I mean, and I do think that you can learn from others, but mm -hmm. for me, I I just always had that idea. I, I had to go through it. Even as a kid, my father'd be like, "Don't touch the stove; it's hot." Yeah. And I'd be like. Oh, that's yeah, hot. I need to like, get I told too. you, I'm like, I know, but I, I just had to, I just had to know. Yeah, and I had to feel it. So, one more question. Yeah. What are some of the worst and best experiences you've had with tenants? Yeah, so with tenants, I mean, we've had some great experience with tenants where a tenant ends up buying a house from us. I mean, that, that's always fun, right? Like, so anytime we can help someone become a homeowner, those are some of the best experiences that we've mm -hmm. had. The worst experiences we've had. <laughs> on the island of Puerto Rico, some of our worst tenants have been Section 8, believe it or not. And 
We had I one. It. We had one lady who moved in, and like I don't know what she did or how she did it, but she broke the kitchen within like three nights, right? Like, I, mm-hmm. I when I say broke the kitchen, like she must have jumped on it like it was a trampoline or something, because it just kind of collapsed and it's fallen off of the wall. And she's calling and saying that the kitchen fell off the wall, and we go over there, and it's like the legs are all shattered out, and it, 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 <laughs> it's amazing how how bad people can treat your homes and what they will live with if you're not careful. So right. that, that as, a, as a landlord always, always sort of is disappointing when you think someone is going to treat something the way that you treat it and live the way you live, and then you go in and you find out that they're not they, taking care of anything and yeah. uh, they've destroyed your house, and it can happen in, a, in the blink of an eye, right? Like, yeah. so. I don't even know what to do about it or, or what I'm suggesting about it. Like you can do inspections and you should as a landlord, you, you do inspections. And obviously we, we don't want to be slumlords. You don't want to let things go not fixed. Mm-hmm. So even, even the lady who broke the kitchen, we went out there and replaced the kitchen. We were not happy about it. Right. Did and she we were, stay as a tenant? She did. She oh. sta- She stayed out through her lease, but it was, it, it was an uneasy conversation with her and with Section 8 where we're like, hey, we're going to fix this, but look at the pictures. I mean, that she, I, nobody to this day could tell me how she broke the kitchen. Did she, she tell you? No, just, <laughs> just that it broke. It was just like, oh, it just broke. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Things don't just do that, but, you know. But, but even when we have the bad stuff, mm-hmm. generally speaking, we're learning something from it. And yeah. I don't know what we learned from that, what the kitchen getting broke, but... Buy cheaper kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we like to use things as a learning experience. So I don't I don't look at, in the moment, or now looking back, I don't look at it as a bad experience. Mm-hmm. I was very frustrated in the moment, right? Yeah. Like, so as it happens, and you've been living here for three days, and you broke the damn kitchen, mm-hmm. I was upset. You can imagine. Yeah. But looking back, now I it. tell the story on YouTube, and it, it's, it, it's all good, right? Yeah. It's all good. Well, you learned something. You learned. You learned. I don't know what we learned. You learned that it could happen. <laughs> I learned that it could happen. <laughs> I learned that I'm telling you, you know, yeah. watch out for this. Be. I think what you learn is that, yeah, it can happen. And, and that as a landlord, the things that you don't even think can happen are going to happen. And you're going to deal with them. And you're yeah. going to... You're going to come up with your own systems. I hope you guys are liking this kind of content and you guys give the video a like, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. We're about to be at 10,000 if we're not already over 10,000 and we're hoping that you guys will join the community. Anyways, we'll do more of this, Justin. Absolutely. Thanks for coming in and sitting down with us. I'm happy to be in business with you. It was a pleasure. So let's go get some stuff done. A lot more deals. We got a lot more, guys.